thanks to Frank, I now have the con uh, conf confirmation box pop up. Are you sure you want to start streaming? Yes, this time, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, man. That was a good time. Could have been so much worse. Could have been so much more embarrassing. Well, that was fun. Just going to pull up the chat here. So I'm in the middle of working on the Maker Faire display. Got done with the um, got done with the video for uh, Volumio yesterday. Jackson, my oldest boy, is now uh, doing some editing for me. So uh, probably be a few days before that gets done. But hey, Eduardo J. Not this time. Not an accident this time, Tyson. Nope. Not this time. How's it going, Tim? Tony, how's it going? This is for you guys on the other side of the globe. I decided to do it uh, later in the evening tonight than I usually do so that it can be morning for the uh, for the folks on the, is it the light side of the earth or the dark side of the earth? I don't know. <laughs> Let's pop out this chat. This one is planned. That's right. This one I actually had, I actually scheduled this a few days ago. Lunchtime. Oh, that's right. Because we did the, when you came on live with us, Tony, it was lunchtime that day. Oh, and speaking of, since we got Tony and all, um, so uh, Andrew, Andre Spice, you know the guy. Yeah, everybody knows this guy, right? The guy with the Swiss accent. Um, he's got a great video about ESP now. And I watched that video, and now I understand it so much better than I did before. I'm sure Tony was doing a good job of explaining it to me, but it just wasn't sinking in this thick skull of mine. But now I understand it, and it's awesome. So, oh, midday, and Shane's at work. Well, at least you got to be here for a few minutes, Shane. And you maybe uh, can you can you just like, I don't know, hide your phone somewhere or something like that? Yeah, Andy, I know it's probably going to be kind of late for everybody on the other on the uh, East Coast. And probably, and the guys from the UK are, it's going to, it's like two in the morning or something. So don't expect to find too many of them. Link, please. Who that person is. Oh, really? Oh my gosh. Well, let's, let's remedy that right away. It's the guy with the Swiss, Swiss accent. He's awesome. Uh, Andre Spies. It is this fella right here. He's awesome. He this guy's a genius, right? Like he knows his stuff. He he knows a ridiculous amount of stuff. Um all electronics based, so I'll copy and paste his channel in there for you. Yeah, he is the master of ESP modules. You are so right. He's the master of a lot of things. Uh, Lora or Low Ray or however you say it. Um, yeah, all kinds of sensor stuff. I and mean, he's a, he's a smart dude. The ESP 8266 guy. Yep. Yep. I love his stuff. I, you know, actually he put out a video about, um, about whether or not he should still do YouTube, um, a while back. It maybe has been a year, maybe six months. And, um, and, and I watched that and that I gave it some thought when I was doing, you know, first getting started doing some videos and, Wondering, is this really like worth the time and all that stuff? And uh, he's just a good guy. He just has a real logical way of thinking about things and all the great Scott. Yes, great Scott's also really good. I, I'm subscribed to him too. Should be. Great Scott's, he's pretty big. Yeah. He's pretty big. Almost 900,000 subscribers. Let's see who else I'm subscribed to. Let's see who else I'm subscribed to. If I can do this without. Uh, Here's my subscriptions. Ooh. Hey, you can come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's live. Oh. Did you want to say hi or something? I don't think so. Okay. My wife came in to tell me something. Hi. Are you streaming? Is I on? I am. No. I think they can probably hear your voice, but. Hey. <clears throat> Great Scott doesn't like MQTT. What does he do? What does he use instead? Marcus, hey, how's it going? The Swiss guy is real technical. That's true, Bobby. He is. He he really knows his stuff. I I don't know his background. He's got to be an engineer or something because he knows he knows too much to be a hobbyist. I think he, he's got some great detail. It kind of works. I I'm sure I'm subscribed to it. Kind of works.
you know, it kind of works. He's fun. But I've been to ask you if you're, yeah. <laughs> do you know you're like, maybe she was, maybe she was coming in to say, did you know you're live? I got a message on my phone. Oh man. When am I off this week? Tyson, I'm not brother. Um, the best, the best bet for actual get together time is going to probably be Saturday afternoon. Sorry, it didn't work out yesterday. We just had, we had football games and, you know, we're having our little Alpine days festival around here. And so it was water, water slides at the park and fireworks and all this stuff. But I did start working on the Maker Faire stuff and I'm, and I've got uh, a decent uh, layout and I know what we're going to need. Um, most of it. So we will chat way over my head. Oh, really? Andres Spies, his video about uh, solar panels? I don't know about his. I haven't seen it. Hey, hey, Demps, how's it going? How do I have my weather set up? I have, um, my weather set up is all through dark sky. Do you have dark sky set up? Don't be fooled by this. There's something wrong with one of these sensors. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is all from Dark Sky. Oh, you're going out into the field, Tyson. Oh, is that better for you? Is that what you want? Is that a, is that a promotion, hopefully? Hey, from a the Azores. Wait a minute, Azores. Uh, it's mountains. Azor Mountains, where are they? Help me, somebody with my geography. Right? Is that Azores? I don't know where that is. I'll admit. I, I, I've i heard of it. Uh, so is the Sonoff RF bridge actually good? The Amazon reviews give you pause. Well, I think most of the, probably the people in the Amazon reviews are using it um, as it's intended to be used. <laughs> and in that, in that situation, I don't know if it's any good. My guess is probably it's okay. I don't know. Um, you know, they only have those those few sensors uh, and all of these RF bridges, they tell you, oh, they just use our sensors. None of the other sensors work or you buy their sensors and it's, oh, you have to use our, our, you know, home base module. None of the others work. But when, when you take the RF bridge and you put Tasmoda on it and get rid of their old, uh, the, you know, the EWE link stuff, it's great. I, I mean, I, I'm actually very happy with it. Azores in Portugal. Oh, so that's not a, that's not a mountain then. That's Dawson. <laughs> did I get permission to stream this time? Yeah, <laughs> this was, this was intentional this time. Yeah, this was the normal Sunday. Uh, Brisbane, Australia. Sweet. So Portugal, man, it must be in the middle of the night for you. Hey Paul, how's it going? Hey Rob. Dude, I loved your, I loved your, uh, your blinds video this week. I, I know I told you that before, but man. That's good stuff. And the way that you made that sketch, I'm excited to use it. Very excited. Interesting project. Ooh, Jeff, do share, do share. Let's see. Darren says, thanks for all the videos. Just got your RF bridge up and running and it rocks. Yes, uh, or ready to rock. Okay, good. Well, let me know if you have any troubles. I, I've loved mine. I really have. I'm going to use one in the Maker Faire. Uh, so the Maker Faire, um, I want to tell you guys about what I've got, what I've got in mind, right? Two, two, oh, two in the morning. Maybe you're on the night shift, huh? Honeywell to MQTT. Can you use the RF bridge to control your TV? Uh, not as it sits, no. You could potentially, I won't say probably, but potentially put an IR receiver transmitter uh, modules on there, a little LED, you know, and, and make it work because um, Tasmoda can do some of those things. I think, uh, I don't know the IR stuff yet. I know some of the guys here in the chat do. So they can probably start telling you about it, but uh, we talked about it before and about using the, um, oh, what's the company now, guys? The Black Bean. Um, you know what I'm talking about. I can't think of the name right now. Let's see. I have a body. Yes. Look, Chris, I have shoulders and everything. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh-oh. Ryan says, try the ESP-01 and light switch. Oh. Not enough current. Oh, Broadlink. Thank you. Broadlink Black Bean. Yeah, the Broadlink Black Bean is a, a good IR to, I guess it's MQTT. Is that right, guys? IR to Wi-Fi um, converter. So you can use 
home assistant to control your TV or other things that are uh, uh, infrared. You know, all the old school, say old school, but traditional remote controls for TVs and such. So the Broadlink Black Bean, ouch. We were looking at it the other day. Um, There it is. So I, I haven't uh, I haven't got one yet, but I'm gonna pretty soon. Black Bean is IR only, Wi-Fi to IR. Yeah. The Pro also does RF. Oh, okay. So if you have uh, right, so Broadlink has a Pro that will do RF and IR. Right. Pro is more complete. Wish IT would make a one wire solution. It can be done. One wire for, I guess I missed what Ryan was talking about, but that was okay. You you and Rob were chatting about something. Um, can you, oops, sorry. Uh, you can DIY a few LEDs, transistors, ESP chip, et cetera, but for that price, it's already packaged. Yeah, amen, right? You could do it yourself, but I mean, at some point, like I love the DIY, you know, and I love hacking it myself, but at some point, you know, how much is my time worth? And is it worth my time to go through and, and piece together all those things or is it enough to buy something that's already done and then just you know maybe change the software or integrate it into home assistant and such how's it going travis by the way pro does your tv air conditioner and lights and a fan dang fred's got the fred's got the pro doing work that's the broadlink rm pro is that what it is Hopefully they've got one. Both mini and the pro and swapping them out for the RF bridge. Oh, really? Okay, you know, 37 bucks, that's not bad. That's not bad. And then do you do anything with the firmware on that, Fred, or does that just, uh, that integrates in Home Assistant already? I, I would hope, hopefully it does. Sniffer using SDR. 513 megahertz. Ooh. All through Home Assistant. Excellent. Excellent. Christopher is hacking a few IR things together. Is he? I tried. So with um when I did the first uh the the RF bridge and the open MQTT gateway software, um they had some instructions on how to hook up uh and run IR. And I tried it but it didn't work and I was kind of under a time crunch to get video done. So I, I didn't really spend a bunch of time on it, but yeah, with a few extra GPIO pins, right. You can, you can add the, um, and I've, I've got two different IR modules. They're cheap, you know, a receiver and a transmitter. It's just two looking, two led looking things and, you know, little tiny boards. And, um, yeah, I know the functionality is there even in the, even in just regular Tasmoda. Did I get a fan O2? I have one. Yep, I have one, but I haven't done anything with it. And the biggest reason is, Travis can tell you all about it. The biggest reason is the um, the speed problem. There's a speed problem uh, because of the, the capacitors that they put in their unit were uh, different than, well, I shouldn't say different. They... The combination of those plus what you usually find in the in the in the fans in the U.S. the variable speed ceiling fans in the U.S. Uh, that combination ends up uh, really slowing down the fan. You end up with like slow, slower, and hardly moving speeds. And in order to fix that, you've got to you've got to take tra what Travis did was take the transistors. Is that is that what it right? Capacitors, whichever it was. I can't remember. Um, you have to take the the parts out of the capacitors. Thank you. You have to take the capacitors out of your fan and put them in the fan O2 module. Um, and probably not, I don't know. What do you think, Travis? Terribly hard, medium hard. I just haven't, I've got too many other things right now that I'm excited about. So I haven't gotten into it. I will get it someday. Um, your remote button's gotten harder. Oh, 
Seems like that would make a great video. Yeah, it probably would. So I need to, I need to get on it. Let me, um, let me get through the maker fair this time. And then, and then maybe we can tackle that one. I'll get, I'll get Travis to help or maybe Travis make a video. <laughs> hey, Finland, how's it going? Um, experimenting, trying to get it up for listening to RF and door switches. Cool. Uh, let's see. Not too hard. Good. Best would be to swap the capacitors with the same sizes. Only it's only two pins and the capacitors. It's not like it's a bunch, right? It's, it's that little black box. I remember you, you posted some pictures I was looking at. So I used to have a ceiling fan that wasn't actually up in the ceiling and I wanted to experiment on that, but I guess it's not there anymore. We must've, we must've sent it to Goodwill or something. Cause it was in the garage for a long time. Now, uh, last I went to look for it, it was gone. Ooh, there are 433 megahertz temp sensors. Is there an easy way to integrate those into home assistant? I don't know. Does anybody know? Um, that would be very interesting to, to, to find out. Um, I wonder what it would send, you know, as far as a, as far as a code, I guess it would send a different code based on the temperature change. It would have to, and, uh, then you'd have to interpret that on the, on the receiving end. So I don't know. It'd be cool. My leak detector module, um, are the detection probes flush with the ground or are they raised slightly? Very slightly, very slightly, but um, pretty flush. They, uh, so are you saying like if you put it on a, like a metal floor or a conductive floor, would you have a problem? I think they are, it's already down in the basement. I'd have to go get it, but I think they are just barely, maybe a millimeter or less above, above the ground. Um, and, in, and then the edges of that thing are, um, you know, kind of jagged and they make it so that water could slide underneath and get to, the, to those uh, contacts. Um, buenas noches, mi hermano de Reynosa. Hey, Charlie, how's it going? Planetary gears off Thingiverse, but it seemed like more trouble than it's worth. Steppers online were super nice. Yeah, I, I, I have some of those same ones too, um, Rob. I'm going to try those same uh, planetary gear steppers. Bedroom one had two, okay, microcapacitors. Seems like living room one has, oh different sizes. They're all pretty close, but IT put like 2.5. Okay. So yeah, you just, you know, let's see, let me, I can pop it open. I got it right here. All right. Just pry the bottom off of this. I haven't even opened it up yet. Any trick to getting this thing open? Oh no, Sonoff TH10 die. It seems like it won't power on. Is there something in the circuit board that can be repaired? Ooh, Darren, I I don't know. Um, I guess the obvious question is, or the obvious answer is, it depends what uh, was the cause of it to fail. Um, so, I, unfortunately, can't. I probably won't be able to tell you that. Okay, so let's do this. Move this guy, turn this on, and then oh, there's my phone going off. All right, so this is the insides of the Fan 02 module, right? And so these are what we replace, is that right, Travis? Open sesame, poof. <laughs> um, Uh, that's a bummer, Darren. I'm sorry your TH10 died. I don't know. It won't power on. Okay, so then you just have to... How do you... Do you just unsolder them from the bottom? Looks like there's a contact point here. And then... Is that it? Is this, is this the only spot where you have to take the solder off? Mm -hmm. 
four relays and two capacitors, right? Yes, just unsolder. Okay, so just unsolder this and pull those capacitors off. Well, that doesn't seem too bad. And then you'll find something like this in your fan. Two pins each, okay? To find the other pin. It's up towards the front, probably. Looks like it's up here. This is probably it. Is that right? Right there and maybe right there. Something like that. Yeah, there are some chunky capacitors, aren't they? That's what threw me off is that you know, you're know you used to seeing this, right? <laughs> Something like that. They go, okay, that's a capacitor this. I don't know. I I would have guessed that that's a, some sort of fancy big relay without really reading it or looking at it. Trying to see where the other points of contact are. Maybe it's this. Is it that one there? Right there. Oh, sweet. Well, that's awesome, Tyson. Good for you, man. Kind of small compared to the ones in the fan. <laughs> yeah, oh, geez. Uh, I love my ceiling fan. I don't know if I could do without it long enough to try and get this working in it. <laughs> but I'll I'll have to I'll have to do it. Let me post a picture in Discord. Cool. Do you have Travis, do you have a webcam? Do you want to um if you have a webcam and a mic, maybe we just bring you on and have you explain it. That'd be awesome. All right, Tyson. Have a good night. Yeah, we'll come down. We'll uh, we'll work it out and have you come down. Um, I've got some good ideas. It's going to be fun. I want to try and get um, some stuff CNC, like a, maybe a big cutout um, from a friend that's got a big CNC machine, and then we'll have lots of fun little magic, uh, little magic things. Got LEDs and sounds. I figured out how to get. I was so happy. I got Volumio to be able to play my like whatever sound files. So we can have a certain sound file played when a certain thing happens, um, which I hadn't been able to do with anything else. Does anybody else do that? Do you guys have like MP3s or sound files, um, maybe locally on your Home Assistant Pi or someplace else, and that you can trigger them to play specifically over your media player? Um, I had tried it and I hadn't been able to do it. I've got a method now with Volumio, but I hadn't been able to do it before. The other one I was going to try is Plex, but I haven't done that yet. Yeah, Ryan, I, I'm, I kind of change the speeds every once in a while. I'll change, it's either hot or like high or just a little below high when it's sometimes the high is so much it like makes my eyes water. Um, Halloween automations. Yeah, we could do some fun stuff once, you know, getting this, getting some of these things worked out. And the, the platform for Home Assistant, I know it's it's obviously made for your house, right? Made to do things around your, your house. And that's awesome. Um, but I've got just a, playful mind, right? I, I want to make some, some toys and just some fun, goofy things for the kids to do. Um, and, and home assistance is a great platform for that too. You know, I'd like to make it so you shake a magic wand at a statue and it talks to you and moves or something, you know, and, and you can set up different automations, probably best with, I would guess, you know, red flows really, but you can set up different little quests where the kids have to run around and they shake the magic wand at one thing and, and, uh, makes a sound and tells them to go to something else. And, you know, you bounce them around the house. I'm just, I'm picturing like family reunions, um, you know, having the kids run around the house and do fun grandkids by the time I get it done. <laughs> oh, on discord. I'm sorry. Yes. Live stream room. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Thank you. So everybody can see that too, but I will, um, I'll pop this out. So this is what, oops. Got to get rid of the desk cam. All right, this is what Travis just posted in, in Discord. So that, so, okay, there you go. There's where the two pins for the capacitors are. So you just got to figure where they go through. So it's this one and this one and that one and that one. Okay. Well, I can, I can pop those off easy enough. I can unsolder those and pop those off easy enough. Ask Justin to put a link to his in here. I'm off for the night. Or you can search Facebook group. Oh, somebody asked, did somebody ask for the Facebook link? 
I should just put it in the video description. That would be the smart thing to do. <laughs> That's okay. Someday I'll do smart things. Man, that's a nice looking, some people are putting some nice looking Lovelace interfaces together. That's, that's great. Okay, here's Facebook. Cool. Sewn off with the one code. The Dr. Z's page. Oh, you mean, I'm not sure. Oh, the Discord? Help me out. Shane, what you need? Tell me what you need. Ooh, you know what, Alejandro? I was just looking at that one too. Do they still have an add-on? I saw a lot of people are using that with with Haspian, and I don't know if they have a Hasio add-on. Um, I can also is somebody wanting the links for those sensors? If you want to chit chat about the fan module, right? Quick, I think I can hit you on Discord for voice. Sweet, let's do it. Let's do it, and then I will uh, pipe in the audio to the stream. Okay, let's get over here. Let's close this guy down. And then let's get. Okay. There we go. Join the call. Travis, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Awesome. Okay, let's make sure I can get. Okay, say something now, Travis. See if everybody can hear you. Yeah, I'm here. I just went ahead and muted you so we don't get echo. Okay, great. And I'm going to end up having to do, well, last time there wasn't too bad echo. All right, you guys tell me, when you hear, when Travis talks, do you get a bad echo? I'll just turn this way down maybe. Yeah, I can hear myself in your background a little bit, but I'll try to not listen to it. Okay, there you go. I turned you way down, so hopefully nobody will hear you but me. But they can hear you on the stream. All right. All right. So let me get your, your picture back up. Well, that doesn't look too bad. I'm I'm encouraged by that now that I actually got it out and looked at it. It doesn't look it doesn't look terrible. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. There was really just trying to heat them up, and then you can stick a like a small flathead screwdriver to kind of help you out and just you know, don't pry on it too hard. You don't want to rip any pads off, but just heat it up, and you can kind of work it off. And it's it wasn't too bad to get both of them out of there. Um, and then clean the holes out, and actually. I put wires in them. Uh, I posted a picture on the Facebook uh, website, I think last week or week before. I can't remember. Um, Cause I just put wires. I was going to put the capacitor from the fan actually in the, with the iFan O2 module, instead of trying to order and find some modules, you know, on the web or AliExpress and wait a month or something like that. So I just used the capacitor out of the fan. And then the module, once you get the Fano 2 module with the right capacitors, it just goes in the wall, right? You don't have to put it up in the yeah. fan? Yeah, you don't, you, don't have, you don't have to. I mean, it just depends um, what, I, what I planned on doing. I'm going back and forth. And what I was planning on doing was there's, if you pull up, pull up your picture, no, I guess not picture, your real iFan module on the, on the screen. There you go. I'll wait for the stream to catch up. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's fine. Um, flip it over, and you can see the the header pin, the header pads, or the, actually the top four. Um, that's going to be your uh, three three volts and uh, TX, RX, and ground. Oh, right over here at the at the very top of that. You see that metal plate? Yeah, it's right here, right? Yeah, there's two oh, sets of. Thumb. Yep, that's the one right, right by the button. Okay, that's where you flash it. Yeah, but it, you you don't have now. The one thing about the flashing is typically the the programmer module won't doesn't have enough amperage to supply because actually, like I want to say, I can't remember. I think it was a small Atmel chip that does some more automation that the ESP chip doesn't do because like it'll kick in some of the larger uh, capacitors to help the fan get started. Uh, when, you notice when you put the, hit the fan like on three, it'll actually click in more power to help get it started and click back. Hmm. Um, and that's the other chip that does that. Um, so, but all that's fine, but that doesn't allow, uh, an, your programmer won't actually power it, all, all that. And so you end up plugging it in, you think, you know, hey, there's, nothing, there's something wrong with it. Well, luckily, 
um, the two I received, uh, they actually had the correct firmware on where you could do the over the air flashing. Oh, okay. And so, cause the only way to really flash it is actually to connect power mains power and then connect your flasher, uh, using just TX, RX and ground. And then there's a pad on the bottom where you actually have to solder a small wire to do, get to GPIO zero. Great. The button is but not you, GPI. You just zero. used Sonata EXE, right? You just used the over the air flashing. Yeah, yeah, that's all I did. Because uh, these are brand, these are brand new. These have only been out a couple months. So my right. guess is that probably all of them are gonna. If yours, the ones that you got, were over the air flashable, then they probably all are. You're probably right about that, and just that simplifies everything. Yeah, for sure. That, for sure, you don't have to worry. Um, about no, not at all. So. And then I, I did solder in a uh, header pin, a hair pin, the four header pin, because probably what I'm going, going to do with that in my bedroom is I'm going to do a PIR, like the, a, it's the AM312 oh, sensor, okay. the, the little PIR. I'll put uh -huh. that in a face plate, and then I'll do a capacitive touch switch. And the capacitive touch switch, you'll do a short press and a long press. I'll probably do short press for the light. And then I'll do the long press uh, to toggle the actual fan on and off. Uh, but it'll, it'll just be on and off based on what speed it was on before. So to put it back to the speed it was on. Right. Like, say, for instance, if you had it on uh, two and then you did a long press, it'll turn it off. And if you did a long press, it'll go back to two. But then you also do get the remote as well. So that's, that's, that's oh, pretty, yeah. pretty huge. Sweet. Well, uh, yeah, when you get it done, I want to see it. For sure. Yeah. The, I just took my stuff. other one, my other fan. I wanted to look at that one. It had the 4.5 uh, capacitor. So um, it's, it may have been close to five. I know there was another guy on the, uh, the issue thread over on Tasmodo. He was, he actually ordered some five uh, UF capacitors and, but he was going to actually replace them on the board. But it just seems like every fan is different. Some people have the six, some people have 5.5. It just, and they did just use a small, uh, just a, a small capacitor. I wonder if it has something to do with they were designed for different fans overseas or in the different voltages. Yeah. Uh, I'm not too much on the capacitor maybe that's size. What it was. With fans. Yeah. I, it seemed like the guys that were not, maybe, maybe you know, you read more of that, that thread than I did, but, uh, seems like the guys that were outside the U S didn't have the same problems. Some, some guys just hooked it up and it was fine, but not right. most of us, uh, you know, using our Harbor breeze, home Depot fans, um, was where the trouble was. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, this, this, some of the, I've got some different fans here and I've kind of looked and they're all about the same size. So I think it's just, we've kind of had the same size in the U S based uh, fans, but they're all going to be a little different based on, so you really have to check your fan to see the blade, you know, because every fan's different. You know, the blade number of blades, the pitch of the blades, that's how they base it off for the capacitors. Yeah. So. Yeah, Rob just made a good point. Half the, you know, we're, we're half the voltage that most places are. And uh, so it would make sense then that why, why we have capacitors in our fans that are twice as big. That makes sense. Right. It's kind of what I, that's what I was thinking. Because... You can also find the schematics to it, and they have, I'm trying to see what good size they use. They, they use a 2.5 UF, and they use a 3 UF, and typically you're going to see 4.5 to 6 in the U.S., so that, that's going to be about your double. So My, my guess is they'll, they'll, before too long, they'll put out another one, and it'll be you know the U.S. version probably, but in the meantime, we'll, we'll do this. this yeah, I mean, you bad. can't... You, you can't beat the price. I mean, for you're getting a remote plus you're getting the three speeds and I mean, you're plus you're getting a light control and it does have a, uh, there's a little speaker on it. I don't know if you noticed that. I saw this little, this little guy right here, right? It's got like a little it, siren. Yeah. The little, P, the little piezo speaker. I, yeah. I did put a, a it's kind of loud and it actually beeps when there's no Wi-Fi. So if he, you start rebooting your Wi-Fi for some reason, it'll start beeping in the middle of the night. I remember once somebody was saying that. I did put a little glob of uh, hot glue on top of it to kind of quiet it down, which it does <laughs> quiet it down. Shut up, you. So, hot glue, you. Yeah, but it is it is nice on the remote. When you press the one, two, or three, you can hear the the uh, you know the different you know you, as you change the speeds and. Um, 
So that's, that's, that's pretty nice. But you can, there's also a button that you can turn off the speaker, I think on the, on the remote as well, if you want to silence it. So. And I saw somebody ask the question, the remote still works when you've put Tasmoda on it, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. I want to say that other chip handles all that. That's, that's, that's all done because that's, that's outside of Tasmoda. And then uh, changing speeds, can you give it commands through, you know, MQTT commands uh, to change the speed? Yes, there's a, actually, if you look on the Tasmoda wiki there for the iFan 2 module, there's actually a, someone, they put added it to the wiki. There's a whole uh, template for a fan with it has it all broken down, all the commands. And I know Theo just added, I checked it out uh, yesterday and flash to it he just added also you if you you can also send a payload of plus or minus uh to oh, via cool. mqtt and that'll actually make it jump and it does roll over it i was looking at the code he did where if it if it if i think if it's three and if you send a plus it rolls over to zero so you can send oh, plus good. or minuses that that'll make your some some of your automations a little easier um but right now i have it in there if you Scroll down. I think someone did like a home assistant. It might be in the home assistant section. It might be. Um, oh, they did a they did a example of how you add it to the config or something. Yeah, I was. I don't remember where it was. I know I saw them at. They added it. They probably put it in home assistant because it was home assistant um, specific. Home assistant forum. Yeah, right there on the home assistant integration. Oh, you think so? Okay. Yeah, if on on the wiki. Let's see, it was Tasmoda Home Assistant. There we go. Yeah. Right yep, all the way at the bottom. So there it is. That's what you need to to do. Let's see what do we got. State topic, speed template, perfect. Okay, cool. And then there's the yes. payloads for low, medium, and high speed. And that's pretty much a copy and paste. You know, except change your uh, your topic. You know, because they just have it set as uh, just ceiling fan. Ceiling but fan, of course, you yeah. change it to whatever oh, name that's super you useful. had. That's and. Super useful. Uh, the only thing that's and that, that'll give you the on and off switch on your GUI, and then inside of it, you'll have the uh, drop down for the different speeds. So you for can do this, the low right? When he puts high. this speeds here, this right, will give you correct. like a select menu. Right. Yep. Cool. Cool. And they just, like I said, they just added the plus and minus, and I was trying to think of some different. Uh, ways of doing it with uh with google voice to you know change the, the fan speeds but i haven't done anything with that yet cool well you you've encouraged me i'm not as scared of it right now as i was a little bit ago so that doesn't look so bad i think um i'll definitely eventually get on that and and take that down i'll probably have to i'll use a fan that isn't my favorite fan that i depend on all the time <laughs> To start with, um, but the capacitors in the fan, they're, they're separate too, right? I mean, you don't have to unsolder those. You just clip some wires, if I remember. Right, right. And, they, and they're, they're going to be two different methods. Um, I found there's every capacitor, there's usually going to, if you pull the light fixture down, you should see the capacitor, just a black box with a few wires right. out of coming out of it. Um, some of them are just going to be dual capacitors. Some of them are going to be triple capacitors. Uh, my one fan actually ha had two separate capacitors. So it's just going to be different on based on uh, capacitors. If you okay. if you uh, pull up Amazon and do like a quick search for like fan capacitors or something, and you should see like five UF or five plus five UF capacitors, and it kind of give you an idea of what you're you're looking for in the fan to get different sizes. So like this, this is what it'll look like. You know, here's, these are five, these are fives. Here's four and a half, five and six. Right. Right. And that's what, that's, that's what's going to be, you're going to be looking for, and this is going to be straight wired up uh, inside yeah. your, uh, usually it's in the light bundle where they had space to put uh, 
that capacitor. It's just kind of floating around in there, jammed in there. So. So you have to sort out where to connect which of these colored wires back to your board, right? Yeah, the two, the two gray, like on that that one, um, the two grays. Um, yeah, that one's the, the, the triple. The two grays are going to be actually they're they're uh, connected to each other internally, and that's uh, ohmed it out in the one I had, and that's actually where the hot's going to come in, uh, and then. Those the other usually the red is going to be for your run capacitor, but then the like use like a brown or or purple. Those are going to be your different speeds, uh, okay. and those were I soldered those into where I had where the capacitors were on the iFan O two. Here's here. This kind of tells you the gray. The, oh, a gray yeah, plus the green is five, and then the gray and a brown is is six. Right. And you can see there's so many different combinations. So you're going to have to go with what your fan has. Yeah. So that's why it's best it's, to just take the ones out of your fan. That makes great sense. Yeah. Makes that's, that's, sense. that's what I, I did. And I kind of just buy, I just bypassed it. And, um, the, the, the one I have in my living room fan is going to be a little different. Uh, it's going to, it's got three capacitors in it. And so I got to see how I'm going to do that one. I think cause it's a run capacitor combined with the two speed capacitors. Yeah. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to put just a run capacitor and I can pull that one out and cap off the run capacitor in there. Yeah. Cool. Well, good work, Travis. Thanks. Thanks for all your other stuff too. What, uh, what else you been working on? You've always got good stuff going on. Um, I hadn't done too much. I was doing my whole home, uh, amperage meter but i haven't been able to have time messing with that um and that's ambitious so you're going to put something in your main panel and keep track of how much power you're using yeah it's kind of a a double or triple play on that is i wanted to see for all the amperage you know for in the, in the mains panel but then also I'm going to use a GPIO pin because my breaker box is actually uh, on the other side of the garage carport area. And there's, it's a different, if a different door. So I want to see, I want to, I was, I don't have a lock or anything on it, but I want to put a door pin. I already have a door pin on it from the alarm, but actually I want to, I'm going to do something in the actual deadbolt uh, probably with some, uh, like you know, the little springs from a battery connectors from like triple A or double A. I'm going to put two, I'll probably put two of those inside the deadbolt. So when the deadbolt closes, it closed the contact. So I'll know if the deadbolt's locked or not. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and, I'll just, and then also I want to put just one of those little MQ uh, smoke detector and volatile gas on that same ESP chip because in that same little area is where the lawnmower and such as that is kind of a bad place. I never really liked it because there's the breaker panel. Plus you have like gas in the same room. Yeah. And so it was just kind of a, another safety device in there. If I could see like if, see if there's a gas leak or something like that, I could, I hadn't had any problem there in the 10 plus years, but it's just something I figured I'd throw on it since hey, I would so it'd be doing the volatile gas smoke, uh, the door, the door lock plus doing the, uh, amperage. Uh, but I haven't really dug into that project much yet. So, um, well, Rob just brought up, uh, that it kind of works has a video here about, about, uh, home monitoring. And actually, you know what, now that I'm looking at this too, I see that, uh, you remember when I opened that package that Gary, uh, sent, uh, there's a couple of these in there. So that must yeah, have been what, something he was working on. Exactly. And then it, probably what you have, the model of the, the S, SCT-013s. And those should be, those are, are 100 amp uh, size. And there's a lot of different ones on those, where, whether you, there's some do zero to one volts and some of them do a current. And if you do a current, you have to do a, build your own little circuit with the capacitor and some resistors to do a conversion. Um, mm. But be sure to, I, I watch that his project, be sure to, he'll say how important it is with the burden resistor, because you could end up uh, shocking yourself, even with that little uh, 
current resistor. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of doing that. Um, but that's cool. So, uh, can you elaborate on the deadbolt contacts thing? Danny says, you just want to make sure that the garage, you're talking about the deadbolt on the door to your garage. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I, I haven't crossed into the whole thing of wanting to do smart locks and I don't know if I will for a while. Uh Uh, but I would like to know if the door is locked or not. Um, combine that with, because it typically at night we arm the alarm. I would like to get, Hey, get a notification of, Hey, you left the shop door locked. Well, just run real, real simple. I've seen a couple of people do different things. Uh, and I thought the one was really cool was they used the little springs from the battery contacts. They just put them inside the deadbolt, uh, actually where it goes in in the striker plate in the door frame. Uh-huh. And just just put two wires to it, and then when the dead because the deadbolt is, is a metal striker, you know, throw, it'll actually put those two springs together. Uh, and the reason why you use springs is because you know when as things get hot or cold, and you won't want it to be oh, it, you know, it, it, as things move sure. uh, based on the various temperatures, you always have that spring pushing against it, and you, that way you wouldn't need any false positives. Um, I saw another cool one. But they did it. They had a metal door. They put a wire okay. on. They put one part of the circuit on, like the the sc- screw on the uh, the hinge, and they mm-hmm. just ran a wire with a little bit of uh, like Brillo pad uh, inside the deadbolt as the other part. So when the deadbolt hit it, it it pushed it pushed that into there. But I don't, this isn't a metal door. This is just a wooden door, so I couldn't do that. I was just uh, so I just. I just bought some more of these because I like this solution for myself uh, as far as being able to lock and unlock it without, um, you know, physically going around every door. And these Uh, are cheap right now. This is Amazon. I don't know what company this is or how long they're going to have them for this price. This is less than you can get them from Banggood. So if anybody wanted one of those, um, I just bought like four of these yesterday. Um, I think my wife would appreciate what you're talking about too, though, Travis, because she's the one that always goes around at night. And I, I was telling her about these. I said, well, you know, I can put these on all the doors, on these outside doors, and it'll work like my office. And, you know, you can know, you can lock them and unlock them from bed. Um, but I think she likes the security of knowing that the deadbolt is twisted. And so what you're talking about would would give her that. Um, that's nice. That's a nice peace of mind. Just, okay, you can look at something and say, okay, I know all my doors are locked without walking around the house and clicking them all. Yeah, and the in, inside the house, I plan on doing the same thing because it shouldn't be too hard to get to. Is just pull the fr- pull the framing off uh, off the door, and you should be able to get to. And you can run a small wire up. I should be able to drill a small wire up to the attic. Um, and you know, there's a bunch of different ways you can hide some small small little wires just because you're not, you know you're not running much vo- uh, amperage Super or glue. anything with it. Super glue some GPIO pins. Yep. So Nick, Nick just made a good comment too. And and that's a great point is, you know, if you, if you have a, if you're in a spot where you have a hard time getting, you know, wired connection, how you can get that to a, what a D one mini or, or something, uh, those RF, those RF, uh, uh, sensors that run on, you know, a triple a battery or whatever, um, would work perfect for this. You just, un, you just undo the read switch and instead you hook up uh, something like this with uh, just wires in the spring. And that would do it. That would do the job. And you could even, you know, you could connect it to which side would you have to connect it to? I don't know. I have to think about that. But anyways, that's a good point. Using those RF um, because they're great wireless battery, you know, cheap uh, and work well. That's a good way. to. That's a good idea. All right. Now, if you another solution, if you also have a a uh, Sonoff, like say if you put a Sonoff Basic or something in the wall right there, uh, don't Uh forget that you've got. You know, on the, the TX and RX pins, you could use those as well. So you could you could tie, tie off a pin in there and you wouldn't have to do a whole another unit. That's That's as long right. as you could run a, a little wire to it. You need a long skinny but, drill bit to go from like your switch box where your Sonoff is through to the door frame, right? Yeah, yeah. You, a long, long flex bit will help you out. But just be careful with drilling the walls. You never know what's in there. <laughs> what are you talking about? Every contractor follows every plan perfectly no, no surprises yeah. 
But other cool. other than that, the only thing I had planned is I've got a, we, a weather module, but I haven't finished that. Uh, just a weather module with uh, just light and light and UV and temperature, humidity, and pressure. Um, I haven't put it outside. I put it outside a couple times, but I haven't put it out permanently. So yeah. that's the only thing I got. Having a UV on. sensor, that's a good idea. I haven't messed with those. Yeah. That, that would be neat. And and it's not too too bad. And once you do all the different sensors, they have all, all the on the ITC ones uh, that or I guess it'd be I squared C. Uh -huh. And uh, so you just wire them up. And uh, I've been messing around with doing using ESP Easy for some of those. I had an issue with Tasmoto was I was starting to put on too many sensors and some sensors wouldn't update. I don't know if it's some library conflicts or something. Uh, mm -hmm. It seemed to be run fine on ESP easy for testing, but then I'll probably end up doing my own sketch on it after that. So, yeah. But, um, cool. Well, thanks Travis. Uh, thanks for, thanks for explaining all that. Thanks for coming on and explaining all that. Appreciate not it. Not a problem. Yeah. Hit, hit me up if and anybody has any questions on the iFan stuff, I'm sure we can always try to figure something out. So. Yeah, for sure. Well, we'll, uh, I'll make sure before I do any any kind of a video about it that I had you um, uh, check it over. Make sure I'm not speaking blasphemy, leading yep. anybody astray. All right. Take it easy. All right, man. Thanks. All right. Bye. See ya. Cool. I love having, I love having guests. That's awesome. And Travis is a genius guy. Zombu's here. You got you got some of these Magnox? I love these things. Um, they're they're great. They're they're pretty easy to install, and uh, yeah, I, I've obviously got one on the. I've got two in the house. Um, well, the other one's a different style, but similar. Um, and then I'm going to use one of these for the Maker Fair, uh, Maker Fair Magic Wand box. You're going to have to do you know some magic voodoo to get this little box to open. Oh my God, I have my little box here. This little box right here is going to hold a magic wand. We'll paint it up and make it all nice, but it's going to open up. And so I'll put one of those probably up here and make it so that they have to do something to get that to open. And then they're going to get the wand, this one or something like it, and, uh, you know, be able to go do something else. I, I'm going to do, I'm going to make them change the temperature of a, you know, I'll have a temperature sensor. I was working on it here. Um, so if they want like a, the ice spell, they're going to have to make, figure out a way to make this thing cool. I'll probably put it inside of something, but they'll have to figure out how to make it cool it off. Or if they want the, the fire spell, you have to heat it up. And then when they get it to the right temperature, light will come on and tell them, okay, now you're, you've got your, your wand charged. And now they're going to have to try and get past the um, motion sensor, you know, so I have to go real slow. And in the meantime, I figure we'll be explaining to, to the moms and dads, uh, well, dads, let's be honest. Um, you know, how all this uh, relates to what they can do in their house with, you know, just regular stuff. But I've got too much time on my hands. <laughs> oh, that is too funny. <laughs> I just, I have a, I have a hard time with um, priorities. Whatever I feel like is the most interesting at the moment, that's the priority and everything else gets shoved aside. <laughs> that's how I have time for all this. Um, so, yeah, I, I see a lot of discussion going on about these uh, magnetic locks. I like them. Um, it, you know, they've been great. And, you know, I, I saw somebody talking about the normally closed versus normally open. Oh, maybe that's what these ones are the normally closed type versus fail safe versus fail secure. Yeah. I think it'll be all right. <laughs> First time catching the live feed. I changed your life. Oh, lucky. Oh, boy. Well, I hope that's good. <laughs> I hope that's good. 12 volt car battery because the controller is in the pantry is out of sight. Oh, so you, you have one of these locks and you put it on a car battery. That's cool. Keep the kids out of the fridge. <laughs> I'll I tell you what, that is, that is, it's no joke. That's part of why that there's a, um, a, a door open sensor on the fridge garage because hungry teenage boys, uh, like to go out in the garage where nobody's watching and just stand in the fridge and, eat all the ice cream or something. Not that that would happen, but if it did, <laughs> oh man. Uh, there, there are bigger locks for more that uh, would handle more, um, you know, more weight. The reason, um, you know, I went with these because they were the cheap ones and uh, 
they're not going to keep anybody from knocking your door down. Um, but they're going to dissuade anybody from just, you know, just pushing on the door and getting it open. Obviously here's one. And you know, the price it's not that, I mean, you're talking, now you're talking a 600 pound lock, right? N nothing is going to move this thing. So, and I'm sure there's all varieties in between. This one's also 600 pounds. So it's all just depends on what you're, what you're protecting, I suppose. I actually found a really cool one. Let me see if I can find this little one here. Um, I found one that I liked for just cabinets, for tiny little cabinets. This guy. I thought this looked cool. It's an RF, uh, and it's directly connected. So there, you're not going to be able to probably, maybe you could home assistant ties this thing but essentially it's this little box that's got um you know the rf sensor in it and uh then you just you put that sticker so that you have an idea of where the target is on the other side of the cabinet and then with your card or your keychain or whatever else uh you can you can unlock the you can unlock the drawer or the cabinet door just with this so this isn't obviously going to hold a ton of weight you know it's Kind of a cool idea. I hadn't seen these before. So I think I like that. It's cool. Post the link. Which link did you want? You want this link? We'll do this link. Or did I already post the other one? You want the you want the seven hundred pound one too, or six hundred pound one? They have to be perfectly parallel to each other. Or they don't have a strength at all. That's totally true, Mike. And the way, and I found that out when I installed mine, I tightened everything down, you know, and I looked lined up, tightened it all down. No good. But what I did was just loosen it a little. And if you just leave it a little bit loose, it's still strong enough that you're not going to, you know, you're not going to be able to pull it apart, uh, like pull the screw out or anything. It's not that loose, but it's just a little loose. And then you can, um, it'll adjust. It, it kind of moves that last little millimeter here or there to, um, to get it uh, where you want it. All right, let's find that 700 pound one for you. Here you go. <laughs> my wife will kick my butt, yeah. <laughs> I would love to lock the fridge. That would be so fun. That would be really funny. Oh, sorry kids, no snacks today. Lock the pantry. That's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> not that you mention it. I think I might. I'll bring it up anyways. I'll, I will get, I think I'll get tarred and feathered and run out of the house by everybody if I started doing that. Uh, yeah, right. And then Thor's the only one that can push off. What's wrong with you guys? You can't get the door open and I've got some magic trick. I was looking at like those uh, magnetic rings. You know, a lot of these, I've got these little reed switch things now all over uh, to activate little fun stuff. So having a little ring that you could slide up against it and just pop off the, the reed switch with a magnetic ring, that would be cool. <laughs> Alex, I need pop tarts. Yeah, that's true. They would know how to do it. Actually, that, they can get in my office that way too by just saying, "Turn off the office lock." And it, it's funny, Alexa. She, sorry for saying that for all you guys out there that have one that just got activated. But if you um, if you say uh, if you say uh, unlock the office lock or open the office lock, she won't do it. Um, but because of the way that it's going through her and then it's actually a home assistant entity and you can say turn off the office lock and then it'll turn it off it'll, you know open it up so yes and the kids know that they can stand outside and just yell that you know turn off the office lock and then the lock will open <laughs> computer no no i'm not going to say it zombie i'm not going to say <laughs> cuz that would that would turn on all the lights uh <laughs> uh yeah i probably could set up a routine to do it mark i probably could um can you change the phrase you can change you can change it a little bit you can't you can't change the um I, yeah I, I don't know how much you can change you can't change the wake word other than those four options and it it'll go by whatever your entity i think you can change it there was a way there was a way in the configuration to change it um, but yeah, I, I would like to make it so that you, so that it, it doesn't sound like a command, so that it's more of a passive 
thing that you say, at least for the Maker Fair, for the little kind of adventure quest thing. That would be fun. Oh, really? Google Home does it so that it only does the one room that it's assigned to. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, that's good. Yeah, my every once in a while, all my lights will go off in my office because the little girls will be, they want to turn their light off or the hallway light off. And so they'll just say, you know, turn off, turn off the lights and it'll turn off every light in the house or turn on the lights, turn off every light, including all the porch lights and everything else. So, uh, <laughs> turn off all the lights now. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Sync music with LED strip. Anyone succeed in home system? So, um, Aswaran, I, I, I asked for and uh, have on the way a um, a small LED strip music sinker. And I don't know how well it's going to work. Um, but when I get it and figure it out, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, I'd be interested to know if anybody else has experience with that and if it's worked for them. Oh. That's cool, Scott. So Scott says you create a home assistant script to do what you want, like unlock the door, and then set up an Alexa routine that calls that strip, and then the routine will let you say anything you want. Oh, okay. I I haven't gotten into that. That's cool. Is there some uh, is there some info posted about that somewhere? Can I can I share a link to somebody with uh, or share a link to everybody with with some more information about how you do that, Scott? If you've got it, um, send it. Still waiting for the Le Lenovo Google Home. Oh, they're making one? Assign the echo to a room, and then it knows which room to turn off the lights. Oh, that would be the simple solution. Kids' rooms, yep. That would be cool for the fan, yeah. Look at the Alexa app, create routines, easy. Okay, I'll check it out. Actually have the Alexa app over here on the desktop. So, reminders and alarms. Yeah, I don't think I'll be divulging any massive secrets here, probably. At least I haven't done it yet tonight, so maybe that now's the time. Um, how many Alexas are too many? We have, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. And one in the garage. As Did you count that one? There's one in the garage. Uh huh. Oh. So seven. seven. We have seven, and it, so far not too many. One is too many. <laughs> Zombies hating on Alexa. <laughs> Twelve. Twelve might be too many. <laughs> one in every room is is uh, probably a lot. I mean, the, we have one in every main room. So one in all the one in each of the bedrooms. Um, one in the kitchen. One in the garage. One downstairs in the basement. And then one in here. Are we counting Google's? Uh, there, well, maybe. You ditched all your Zombu for what? For Google Home? I have one Google Home. Really, you guys all switched to Google Home? I like the, uh, the, the kids are all used to Alexa, so I can't switch now. But I have one Google Home that I just use for testing and messing around with. Didn't you say you could, like, Tell the Google to tell the Alexa. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, I did that. So, how do we set a routine here? Is it under skills, reminders, smart home? Scenes, devices, things to try, no, reminders, no. Yeah, I activated my vacuum, yeah. Oh, you have to do it on the phone? Okay. Does Alexa, Federico, does Alexa not do other languages? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amrani says two years after using Alexa, you can't use anything else. You know, we have the, one of the first ones, uh, the one that I still use in here uh, in my office, we got it um, when they were still testing them. It was like, hey, we're going to put out this new product and, you know, uh, do you want to test it out? This was years ago. I don't even remember what year it was, 2012, 13 maybe. And so we bought it then, and it's still going great. I'm sure the newer ones are whatever, better, faster, quicker, stronger, whatever, but I like it. 
the best is one that can hear you. Yeah. Um, I like the, I like the, the way that the Google talks to you. I think it's, I mean, Alexa is pretty good too, but it's very natural. Uh, it sounds like when you say, Hey, turn on the fan or turn off the fan. He's like, Oh, okay, sure. No problem. Something like that. So it's kind of cool. Google to remove the guest mode. Oh, do I use Plex? You know, DJ, I was just looking at Plex today because I just did, um, Volumio. Um, Zombu was the one that turned me on to Volumio a few months back and it's been great. I love it. And, uh, just finished the video about that. And one of the, one of the things I was talking about earlier that I was really excited about being able to do now with Volumio is to be able to play uh, a, a sound clip as part of an automation or just, you know, calling it as a service in home system. And I hadn't been able to do that with my, um, with Google home or with Alexa or with, um, the, uh, Chromecast. So, um, but I can do it with Volumio. So that was really cool. And then I thought, well, there's gotta be probably other, you know, uh, other media players like that, that maybe are, you know, have an add on for home assistant and Plex does, um, or has the add on and, it, and it's got a lot of stuff you can do with it. So we don't have, we have a lot of old movies, um, you know, that we might play through it. I think mostly what we would use it for is uh, music. So, but we use a lot of Spotify. So that's another big thing for us for Volumio is we have a Spotify, we have a premium family thing. So all the kids have their own, all the kids who want one have their own um, uh, Spotify account and we can all listen at the same time. It doesn't cut anybody off. So that plus Volumio um, is a good one. So, but yeah, I, I want to try Plex. I was looking at it today. So I, I think the time will come before too long where we can, um, she'll say nothing if you ask her to really, I didn't know that. I knew that there was a, like a, they, they just came out with a, like a repeat command thing. So you can say her name once and then, you know, she'll give you the answer and then you can ask her something else and ask her something else multiple times without having to say her name again every time, which is really cool. Yes, Danny, I am an anesthesiologist. I really, really am. Tomorrow's going to be a long day. I got a lot of surgeries to do tomorrow. Paul Hibbert video using Google Home through Alexa. Oh, I haven't seen it. That looks cool. I'll have to check it out. Use Plex a lot. Oh, okay. And it, oh, it, oh, really? Plex doesn't play nice with Home Assistant? Oh, that's too bad. I thought it did. 64 core Plex server. You have some crazy stuff, Zambu. Some crazy stuff. <laughs> what about the dimmer switch? Um, use I don't use any dimmer switches. Um, we've talked about dimmer switches. It's really tricky. It's going to be first based on what kind of uh, lights you want to dim, and um, you know, and then there's a few options. Um, I'm sure that there are some. You know, if you just buy the expensive switches, I don't know which would be a good brand for you. But if you just buy an expensive one that um, has dimming and that can integrate uh, with a component in Home Assistant, it should work. Virgil, any love for Open Hab? I just haven't used it. Um, you know, I've heard good things about it, but I haven't used it. I tried to get, um, oh, what's his name? Yo-Yo, Yo-Yo Tech. He does all the, he does a lot of Open Hab stuff. And I sent him a message and said, hey, why don't we, why don't we collaborate on something? You do, you do Home Assistant for a few weeks or a month and, and check it out and do a review. And then I'll do open hab for a month and do a review. We'll put them out at the same time. Be kind of fun. I never heard back from him. So, um, you go comment on his videos and tell him that, uh, he needs to take, he needs to take up the challenge, the home assistant challenge, home assistant V, uh, open hab challenge. <laughs> Why can't I just lie down and have a nap with my patients? Every once in a while, some, one of my partners will fall asleep in the OR. <laughs> I, I just, I have hard enough time falling asleep at night, man. Are you kidding me? One for you, two for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, it would be a very short career. <laughs> um, let's see. Bobby, who's Bobby? Which one's, is he, uh, does he do open hab? Did open hab before Hass. Hass is the clear winner. Oh. So, you know, I went, when I was first looking at first, barely starting, probably like a lot of us, um, started during, uh, with, with Ben 
Um, and I started because I did those LED lights and he had a sketch and it was controlled by Home Assistant. So when I first started Home Assistant, all I had was my LED lights outside. And then I said, oh, what else can you do with this? And then I was looking around at the, a few of the different options. And I, I read a few comments like what you, were, like what you just said. Um, let's see, who was it that just made that comment? Oh, yeah, Tim. Yeah, I, I read a few people that said that same thing. I tried them both. I tried several things. I tried smart things, tried Wink. And, and, they, and a lot of people said Home Assistant was just the way to go. And so I haven't really ever tinkered with anything else. I have a, I have a uh, smart things hub sitting here. I've got an empty Raspberry Pi I could use for open hab if I ever got to it. But Sean, Ben's around. Ben, I, I don't know if he moved houses or he did something, but he just was tweeting a couple days ago. And so he was congratulating Rob on hitting 5,000 subscribers. And um, so he's alive. He's alive. I, he's, he said a couple of times he'll still make videos. Um, he's like, the I, I told him he's the grand poobah of, of uh, home automation DIY videos for sure. He started like a whole... The whole thing, the way he did it was so easy to understand and, and, um, thorough and clear. And it kind of answered all the questions that you, that somebody would have. Um, and it was hard to find it, it, it certainly even a year or two ago to find any kind of, um, how to video that was for this kind of stuff that was well explained. So he started it all. <laughs> Every time you think Lovelace, think another name, Barflace. You don't like, oh, Zombu's a, Zombu's a no, a no UI guy. So he doesn't care about Lovelace. Whole box of old 10 times stuff. I know. Well, thanks, Sean. Not sure why Rose doesn't have his house set up yet. Yeah. I don't know, Tim, but he will at some point. He will. Need the code for the shades. Tim, you, you need the code for Rob's shades? Rob, you've got, I can link your video. That would be good. And then, it's already time to start getting wrapped up for tonight, fellas. I got to get kids to bed here in a few minutes. I do. Yeah, you're going to bed, boy. You're going to bed. Let's find Rob. <laughs> Dawson's sitting here not wanting to go to bed. Got a week left of summer. DIY motorized shades. Copy and paste. Oh, was that, did you not put it on GitHub? Oh, wait, was that right? Were you saying, wait, I'm trying, sorry. I, I lost track of my, oh, bruz shades. Oh, okay. Well, Rob's got some, Rob, I can't remember what you said you did with, I know you were doing some, you were holding some stuff for Patreon. I can't remember what you said you were doing with this. Here. I'll do that. I'll paste the whole, the blog post here. Damps, you are so welcome, brother. Glad to help. It's fun. I have a good time. This is my, this is my, this is my outlet. This is my hobby. This is what I do for fun. Seriously, I'll sit up here and just tinker with stuff. I, tonight I fried, um, who beeped? I don't know. Maybe it was me. Headphone wasn't plugged in all the way. Oh. Um, I fried two. So off SVs tonight, playing around with the Maker Fresh stuff, just being a dummy, not paying attention. If you put if you put uh, 12 volts on the uh, V pin here for your uh, next to the GPIOs, it it ends badly. The magic smoke escapes. Um, how often do I do live streams, Danny? Every Sunday, every Sunday, and then every once in a while, when I accidentally hit the stream button <laughs> when I'm recording for a video, then then we have an impromptu uh, middle of the week random stream. But yeah, every Sunday. And so this actually, this coming Sunday, I won't. This coming Sunday, I will be at work all day. So I will do either Saturday or Monday, probably. It depends on which day I have some time. But uh, yeah, come hang out. And I sometimes will do it at night like this. I mean, night for me. I don't know, you know, wherever you are. But uh, I'll do it this time of day. And then I'll do it, you know, earlier, maybe 10 hours earlier so that everybody's in different time zones. We have such a like worldwide, um, uh, group, you know, that enjoy the same hobby that, um, it's good to have a different time. So everybody can join. Um, what was blasphemous? What was blasphemous? Sambu? I missed it. Monday. I could do it next Monday instead of next Sunday. I can do that. Um, it'll be in the evening, but yeah, I'd be happy to do that. We can, you want to just say that schedule it. 
All in favor, say aye. <laughs> aye. Okay. Blowing up your sonoffs. Yeah. Oof. Is Tasmoda Air flashable again? DJ. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, newer devices um, that have the newer firmware, that have a firmware, firmware called 2.0. Um, two point maybe it's even 2.01 or something whatever but yes it is it is uh over the air compatible now in fact when we were talking earlier about the fan about the fan module oh i'm so sorry every time i hit my elbow and i um shake the desk it probably sends a horrible sound through all of your speakers i apologize <laughs> um yeah esp 8266 funeral yeah i've got a couple here i need to bury which is too bad because you know i have a bunch of basics but i don't have a ton of of the SVs. So I think I have one left. I'm going to have to buy some more. I'm so sorry, guys. Oh, sorry, your ears. Eesh. It's a great microphone, but it's sitting on my desk and it's a tiny little space and I bump it sometimes. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Um, do I have experience with Blue Iris and Home Assistant integration? Mike, I don't. Uh, I will someday. <laughs> Dabu says, do it again, do it again. Oh, man. Uh, you found a plug that fits those pogo pins. Four pin fan connector. Oh, cool. Really? Do I have a PO box where people can send me stuff? You know what? I should get one, Stuart. I've had people just send it to my house. Probably not the best idea. You know, it probably was no big deal. And I don't know. But yeah, I don't, Stuart. But if you want to, uh, my email, you can go to the website and you can get a hold of me through Discord, is probably the best way. And then, um, yeah, I can give you an address where you can send stuff if you'd like. That'd be fun. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, the four channel low voltage ones are great for sprinkler valves. Cool. Brisbane. Yeah. See, so I, I, I did this tonight, um, for the folks on the other side of the globe on the, on the light side of the globe right now. Cause we're on the dark side, right? Um, if you send them stuff, he takes a long time to look at it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. Recognize this James. <laughs> Oh, such a, I'm so bad. I am so bad. Um, but to be fair, it wasn't the trunk of your car for a while too. So, uh, anyways, yeah, I, I'm still going to get this up there. I, I, I need to just chat with you on discord again, James, and you can just tell me what I need to do with it. Just plug it in. And, um, no, I never have figured out how to open it. I, but honestly, I've never messed with it again. Uh, I messed with it when it first came and then, um, and then, yeah, I was messing with Tony's stuff and I haven't gone back to it. I really want to. Um, the Discord link in your video description has expired. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, somewhere we have a permanent one. Well, I mean, I'm, if you go to if you go to the Home Assistant uh, Discord, um, that'll work. So I can do, I can just pop another one in here. Yeah, these only last for a, a day. I, I probably, I bet you I'd do that on every video description, huh? That one's the home assistant one. I, there is a separate one too, um, that we set up. I can do that one. Invite people. But I, I'm on discord pretty much all day. Um, most of the time it's, yeah, I need, I need to. Is it easy to make a permanent one? Somebody made a permanent one for me and I lost it. If you push the button until it beeps once, it'll go into AP mode. Oh, okay. I'm talking about something else. Uh, I see the tabs in the camera. You have to put a thin screwdriver in there to open it. Oh. Oh, right down here. These little guys. Okay. Push the button until it beeps and it'll go into AP mode and then I can connect to it. Okay, cool. Zambu, good night. Have a have a nice day tomorrow. I'll get I'll get to it before too long, James. Thanks again, man. Uh, or you could just get the address out in one of the many leaks. It'd be there somewhere. Yeah, it probably is. If nothing else. You've got my my. Uh, I know I've put my coordinates out there many times. My longitude and latitude. You figure it out that way. Um, Do I have a blue Yeti mic? I do, Stuart. Yep. 
that's what I use. I use a Blue Yeti mic and I use um, Reaper. It's a it's like a whatever modulating software, so it cuts out a lot of the background noise, so you don't hear my computer humming, you don't hear the fan spinning, and um, then it makes my voice very you know radio ready, which is probably why sometimes it's hard to hear. I probably put I probably did the settings in a bad way, put it too much bass or something. So, but yep, Blue Yeti mic. When you make a link, there's a button to edit invite link. Let's see. Edit invite link. Oh, expires never. Max. Ne oh. Okay. That's right. Thanks, guys. We learn so much better together, right? It would have taken me forever to figure that out. So I think that was the Dr. Z's um, Discord channel. Let me put one out for the Home Assistant Discord channel, too. That would be this one. Okay. Yeah, if you, man, Discord, Discord, Discord. I can't say enough about uh, about how great Discord is for getting help you need uh, when you need it. Um, if you don't find uh, somebody on there that knows what you want to know at that moment, just don't despair. Come back later. Try different channels. Um, you, know, you can always try and uh, message folks. Um, but. Sambu, do you need no, any way to add a clickable link to a video stream? Yeah, I missed what you guys were chatting about there. So, Anyways, all right. Are we ready to sign off, Dawson? Sure. Okay. Dawson's here to sign off. Anything else, guys? Any last uh, last requests, last comments before we head out for the night? Dawson's going to lose his mohawk. Come sit over here, bud. Dawson's had a mohawk this summer. Still says expired. Really? No limit. Expire after never. Yep, Discord help me. Try that one. Let me try this link one more time. Oh, did you press? Do you have to press invite to all those people? No, I could if I wanted to. Grant temporary membership. It will never expire. This one says it'll never expire. Okay, maybe I didn't hit this. Maybe I didn't hit it right. Coming in. Yeah. Coming in to say bye to everybody. Okay. So Dawson's had a mohawk here for the summer, but it's going away. School starts in a week, and we gotta gotta get rid of the mohawks. Everybody, get in here. Okay, okay. mini me. Yeah, he is my mini me. Okay, these are the these are the babies. Uh, Grace, Holly, Dawson. So remember what they say. Thanks for watching. And until Adios. next time, adios. Okay. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thanks a lot. We'll see ya. We'll be back on next uh, Monday. 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 Adios. Adios. Okay.